Hello, here I am, see? It is getting better. The drops are working and I can try a little bit of light today. So our gospel today was on the wisdom of people and chanting their treasures against God. And our first reading was from a book of wisdom, which is Ecclesiastes. So my reflection today is on wisdom on earth versus wisdom in heaven. And I talk a bit about the treasure of children. When creating something at the potter's wheel, the artist shows infinite patience by allowing the item to show what its form will be before deciding that it isn't perfect and starting again. This new start will have the same identical foundation with either, with either a bit more or a bit less material than the time before, so it will reach perfection. Whatever the Creator made on this earth, it is exactly as He intended it to be. Each and every single creation is perfect in His eyes when it is born. We may screw up His creations to no small extent, but that creation, that birth, that we small baby is how he intended to be. There's no small imperfections. We are in his image at that moment because his image changes every second, every nanosecond. So every single one of us is his image. And his love for each perfect creation is without measure, unconditional, uncontrollable, and precious to observe. That is why he created the maternal bond, the specific hormones sprinkled in the brain of all female mammals that cause them to want to tend to nurse their own species and to be able to nurse if they have given birth with that gestational cycle. It is such that if the female mammal, even a woman, has given birth or miscarried with that gestational cycle for a human, if they have even miscarried within 17 to 22 weeks, upon hearing what's called the milk cry, which is the newborn cry, their milk will let down again. Or if they smell the placenta, which is the first smell of the baby, as they're born, their milk will let down again. That is how small, how strong the maternal urge is in a human female and also in every other mammal female. And with those who wonder about the postpartum depression, the depression is so strong, it will suppress that urge. It suppresses the urge that is put there to sustain the species. That is how strong, that is how deadly that disease is. This isn't a disease where they can just buck up or you're just having the baby blues that is why these women need professional help. That is why God put antidepressants into the world for these women. There are very special antidepressants for postpartum depression so that they can still nurse, so that they can still tend to their baby and not cross-transfer any of the, 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 the drugs through their milk. God would not have allowed us to create those drugs. But on to the re re reflection. The maternal love and the merciful creator would not ever believe that any of these children would not ever be welcomed somewhere. 
They would, he did not ever imagine that some country that calls itself Christian, even Judeo-Christian, that they would deny entry to children. That any child born of a human mother, loved unconditionally by the Creator, and accepted and loved by all of Christendom, because of the Lord's commandment, love one another as I have loved you, should ever be denied sanctuary when she or he is in mortal danger. Why would any country ever deny a child sanctuary? What country in this world would deny refugees the right to land? What country would deny entry with the memory of the deaths in the Holocaust, of the thousands of Jews who were denied entry to the United States in 1929, 1930, and 1931. All of them were forced to go back to Germany, and they died, every last one of them. The South and Central American refugees are eligible for asylum under every UN refugee resettlement compact of the 20th and 21st century. They're only being denied because their countries are connected by land. Now, does that make sense to any of you? That we would deny refugee status simply because these people walked and didn't come by boat that we allowed Cubans to come because they came by boat, but because these people were able to walk here, we deny them. Does that make a little bit of sense too? So the Syrians and Yemeni children that are dying by hundreds every day due to starvation, they are denied refugee status because they might become terrorists someday. So, by causing the deaths of hundreds and thousands of them, don't you think their cousins who survive might become terrorists? Duh. So why don't we let the children and their families in so we don't create terrorists, you bloody fools? The requirements of the Lord are easy to see. Give food water, clothing, and shelter to all those who are lesser than you, and you are doing this for me. Deny it, and you deny it to the Lord, and are condemned to Gehenna with the cust customary wailing and gnashing. Paraphrased Matthew 25, 35, 46, the usual. It is not difficult to see who the angels will sort into the fires, and who will be wailing, grinding, gnashing, yada, 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 in the fiery furnace of Gehenna. There is time to change course and welcome the refugees from South and Central America and our brothers and sisters and their children of Syria and Yemen. May we praise the one true God for the deliverance of all refugees from their torments, their terrors, and bless the young children we have saved. It is our God requirement to save 